everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to take a look at another recent antique acquisition and this one is a lovely tiny little wounded bird to quote Abby Cox uh, that I picked up recently for quite a good deal along with a friend who you will be seeing in a later video. And they were both from eBay. And this one, I was just really drawn to the textile. It is such a really interesting print that I've never seen before and not something that I feel like we think of as historical in any way. So we'll take a really nice close look at the print when we take the close up look at the bodice. But it is definitely something that it's just like, what the heck? Who thought of this as a print? And I also just love the way that it closes together and pieces together. This is from the early 20th century, so the early 1900s, and that was really a time when they just really like to hide their bodice closures. So looking at it on the form here, you might think that it actually almost fits the form, except that this closure that is happening right here actually is supposed to be more like over here. So it does not at all fit my form. Story of my life with all of these antiques. But because of that overlap, it does kind of look like it's okay on this form. Now, as I mentioned, she is very much a wounded bird. There are parts of this that are just missing, like around the collar. There used to be some sort of pool decoration there. So we are just kind of going to have to guess at some of that. And again, as we get a close-up look, I'll tell you what my guesses and conjectures were as to what that probably looked like. But I wanted to show you her first here, mostly closed and put together on the form before diving in for that closer look. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Now this is really what I am talking about here with this print. What even is this? It's like some sort of futuristic sci-fi amoeba squiggle. I really, really don't know who thought of this, but it does make for an intriguing print. And honestly, from far away, it just looks kind of like a cute calico. You never would think that this is something that they would use to make bodices about 120 years ago. But I believe this is a cotton fabric. It is quite lightweight when we can kind of separate it from what's underneath. Actually looking at this collar here, what's underneath is this that I am assuming is a silk because of the shiny texture, but it doesn't feel like a very high quality silk. And honestly, I think that that's something about this bodice in general is that it definitely feels more kind of homespun. And I think a lot of that is kind of biased based on the condition. As you can see, the condition of this neckline, especially that's the worst location where the decoration really is just gone and disintegrated. But the rest of the bodice, there are quite a bunch of holes in here. You can see little ones scattered throughout and sometimes there's larger ones too where the fabric is really kind of starting to just want to disintegrate there. You can see like there. And really that is throughout the whole bodice and we'll address some of that as we get in there. Most of the other decoration is largely intact, which this is all ruched up ribbon. So we have ruched up ribbon all the way around the collar here. And then we also have it on the bottom of the sleeves. This is really the only place where it is coming off is on the bottom of this sleeve. But you can also see that the fabric here on the bottom is quite disintegrated as well. So construction wise, we have an interior that is more fitted and this ruched area up the front or gathered front here, this pulls over and disguises that closure. So this area comes actually over to here and closes over here if it had fit the form or the body that it was wearing. I'll show you that more when we're laying it flat, but I do like to show you, of course, what it looks like on the dress form as much as possible. We can really see the under layer of the collar here too. So we've got these awesome scalloped edges on here and these are just sewn right sides together and then turned on the scallops. And honestly, they didn't even do a great job of clipping their curves because that is what happens when you don't clip your curves. You get kind of lumpy curves and you get little pleats happening there at the intersections where it comes together. And 
that collar wraps around. So undoing the hook here, what we can see on the collar is that it's connected up at the shoulder. And this side, it's actually connected past the shoulder. I don't know if it's because it's come undone more, but it's connected in the back of the bodice and then comes around and closes with a hook and an eye in the center front right there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the back and then we'll take this off the form so that we can really dive into all the details. The back is honestly just as darling as the front. We have all of these little scallops all around the collar again. You can see again here where it is very, very holy, this outer fabric, but we have just the super, super cute collar and if this was actually centered on the bodice, this would be centered on the inside edge of the shoulders right here, and then coming up to the center of the back right about here. And then the fabric itself, the bodice fabric, comes into just a little bit of like a pleat tuck right here. This waistband, by the way, I have it pinned, but it hangs loose. It is only connected, at least currently, it is only connected at the center front and was probably just held in place by tension as it fit around the body at the waist. But this is the same little silk fabric that is the underside of the collar and we just have a few pleats right there to make up this cute little edge belt. Here's a close up on that trim that is ruched all along there all along the collar. And again, the same trim is ruched up on the sleeves and it is just ribbon that has been gathered down the center. Okay, let's go ahead and look inside. So here is this rather complicated lady laid flat out on the table. And I don't know if it's apparent just from this just how small she is, but I will give you a measurement in a little bit here. So I first want to show you just how the closures work on this because as I mentioned, it really is quite complicated. So first we have the collar, which as I mentioned before, closes with a hook and an eye. We've got the eye on this side. That opens up here. And I realized that it is important actually that that opens up past the shoulder because then this collar section or what was the nice collar section closes to the back of the shoulder here. So there are hooks and I believe bars or they were thread bars. They're not there anymore. I think there's remnants of thread bars right here. And that is where this closes up to. And you can see that it goes and covers up this black, really lightweight cotton right here underneath with this ivory that is a little thicker, almost, it's not a twill, but it feels like a twill. And that is whatever the base was for whatever that decoration was. So then that opens up, we'll lay this back out a little flat, that opens up to here. And then it connects with the bodice fabric starting right here. So we have, this is the edge of the bodice right here. This opens up here. And then center front, we have hooks and eyes here. The only actual closures on this flap over here, we have a hook here. Here, the eye or thread bar is long gone and then we have the hooks again up at the top that went to the shoulder but this is the only other hook on here besides right down here at the waist the waist that one went to this thread bar right here so I would imagine that there was also a thread bar that went with this one here however you might notice that this area is kind of torn up I believe that the thread bar would have been approximately right here where this hole was and now it's a hole. So make of that what you will, but there was probably a thread bar there. This sort of deterioration honestly does make me wonder if there is wool content in here. I feel like it's a cotton just because it is sort of that calico print, but I could be completely wrong. There could be wool in this. It could be a cotton wool blend even. This, by the way, is the backside of the fabric, if that gives any sort of clue. It is very lightweight and it feels crisp like a cotton, not at all soft or itchy or anything like that. But then again, they had better wools back then. So once you have this bit open here, as I mentioned, we have the hooks and eyes up the center front. They do this, the alternating style, which was very, very common in really all excellent bodices that I've studied. They tend to do the alternating a lot. These guys up at the top are a bit rusted, which is probably because there's water damage up there and the rest of them look quite fine though. And those go over here. There's bones, by the way, in this center front. So there's a bone here, 
bone here. We'll get to the rest of the boning in just a second, but that is that complicated closure. And you can see like the double hook right here because this one goes to the center and this one went to that overlapping thread bar. So they really are funky closures in this era. While we're still looking at the outside, let's talk a little bit more about what this color decoration might have been like. So there's all of these strings that are just kind of all over, torn up on the collar edge in particular, like they're tacked in place by the edge. And then sometimes they go to places like the shoulder seam where they are again in place. So my guess is that that was some sort of I want to say lace, but you know, a rougher sort of lace, some sort of a woven maybe design with these loosely done across the neckline. Of course, we really have no idea, but the way that these are like crisscrossing each other and going down and connecting into the bottom, I just feel that probably there was some sort of a design of all of these strings crisscrossing all over the place that because it was loosely woven, got caught on things, torn, etc., and no longer exists other than these remnants of little threads. Also, obviously, this was water stained or water damaged at some point, and some of these may also be like holes that result from rust, or they could be from other situations as well. I mean, it almost looks like a burn or something, this one right here, but more likely it is rust related or, I don't know, just age in general. You can see more of the strings coming out of the collar right in the back and down here. So again, they probably went across, I mean, like look at all those little bases right there and then you get the other bases right there. So my guess is that they probably would have crisscrossed each other just because I think that'd be a really pretty pattern, really pretty design. That is my guess. So before we get inside, let's just take a closer look at how this is put on right here. So this edge is folded in and then there's two rows of gathering stitches that go right here and then it's attached to this under layer here. Likewise down here we also have some gathering stitches and that's creating that little little bit of a pigeon front that they liked in this era and that's just very very nicely done. In the front here this is all one piece going from the side seam all the way to the edge right here. It's all one piece that's just been gathered up around here and then this side it continues up all the way to the shoulder seam up there and to the arm's eye. On the other hand I find this side's construction quite interesting as far as what they did with the fashion fabric on the exterior because if you look closely here the main body of fashion fabric actually ends right here and comes down in a very weird way until it meets well really it doesn't even meet it's just that there's a gap of fabric. I don't even think that that's that the fabric has gone away. I think there literally was originally a gap, but this one goes all the way down to here. In other words, about three eighths of an inch from the edge, it's finished there. And then there's another little piece here and this goes down to the point, this other little piece, and then there's the gap, and then there's a finished edge right there. And then this goes up here as like a sort of facing, but it makes a weird square there on the neckline and then there's the black fabric underneath and then also this fabric here comes up here and finishes right there but doesn't actually make it up to the shoulder this is a separate piece of fabric right there so piecing is period guys piecing is period i mean we have so many pieces that are making up this front section right here even though like this was all one nice big piece you kind of have to wonder if they went and cut this piece out and they're like ah oh, crap we didn't cut the other side of the bodice. What do we do? We only have scraps left. And they made this, which is entirely possible. Again, this is a very homespun feeling bodice and maybe that's really what happened. So sleeve construction wise, we have a nice curved sleeve over here. This is a two piece sleeve and the underside is quite narrow. So one seam is right here, but the other seam is actually right here. So you can see just how narrow the underside is compared to the outside or overside, which wraps around to the underside. The sleeve is also pieced. So 
Right here, we have another seam in there where they again may have run out of fabric. And that is the underside of the sleeve. The outside of the sleeve is not pieced, or at least not that I've noticed so far, though it does have a beautiful little mend. Look at this lovely little mend that they did right there. See all that where it's just whipped together? I love antique mends. They do such a such a careful job. And then up here at the sleeve head, it is gathered just a little bit. It's slightly more than eased, I would say, but it's gathered just a little bit into the shoulder. Down here at the cuff, there's a second piece that just flares out a little bit below this seam and it has a nice little scalloped edge as its hem and it's lined with that silk. And then there is a facing of the outer fabric that is inside the cuff, which I think is quite interesting because this outer little cuff bit is definitely sandwiched underneath that facing. And yet they still took the care to make that out of the fashion fabric, which was quite interesting to me. And then it also has that ruched ribbon trim that I showed you before. But again, this is where the ruched ribbon is coming off. So we could actually, we could actually see the back side of the ribbon if you want as well. And then there's the front side. As far as the back of the bodice goes, this is all one piece over here. What I find interesting is that this little pleat in here, it's actually sewn down in place. It's overlapped and then sewn down in place right there with... I can't tell if that's like just a really nicely hidden whip stitch. As you know, if you've seen my other videos, I don't know hand stitches very well, but it's really nicely hidden, but I do think it is a hand stitch. And then I wanna show you one other little bit of piecing right here, which is right in the underarm. They were just the hairiest bit short. So they had to piece in this little triangle on the underside of the sleeve. And so that underside really is quite pieced because this is where that seam was that I showed you earlier. Oh, by the way, the outside of the sleeve is gathered just a little bit at the elbow into the undersleeve to give just a little bit of fullness at the elbow, a little bit of that curve and that movement. And you can see the back of the sleeve head is slightly more gathered than the front of the sleeve head there. The other bit that is interesting here with the collar is A, the silk is also highly pieced. You can see this triangle here, this other piece right here. And actually this is just a little piece right there because that's another seam. So very, very highly pieced. This was just done and whip stitched down at the bottom, by the way, I just folded in and whip stitched. And then the outside, what I thought was interesting, I went looking for seams. You'd think maybe there'd be a seam like in the center back, no, there's a seam right here. So again, this is like pieced. It's all one piece except that they needed a seam right there. But they didn't care because piecing is period. Also, we can see a little bit of the inside structure right here. So here is, I think it might be like a horsehair canvas that is right inside the collar, giving it that body that we need in a collar. So there are at least three layers in this collar, the outer fabric, and then this horsehair canvas or whatever this is right here, you can see in the hole, and then the silk on the bottom. Just really quickly before we take a look at the inside, I had mentioned this little piecing piece right here. The same is not true for this sleeve over here. It has the same piece down here at the mid upper arm, but it does not have the little triangle piece. So again, they didn't even care about symmetry in their piecing, they just made it work. So taking a look at the inside, the first thing that I find quite interesting is that this black cotton, which again is just a very lightweight cotton, this is not polished cotton, it goes up to the bottom of the collar in the back, but in the front it actually goes up and is underneath the collar as a separate sort of structure. So we can see here we've got the two layers and they're, they've come together right here at the edge of the neckline for the binding, but otherwise they go into the shoulder so that you have the black underlining right here, interlining, and then you have the white of the collar, the ivory of the collar right there in that seam. So I thought that that was quite interesting and actually we can see a little bit better that rope thread detail right here on the inside because this is still intact so I wonder what that would have looked like on the outside but it looks pretty cool on the inside. Okay so another thing that I think is quite obvious is just 
how kind of unfinished this is on the inside, especially if you saw my last video with that gorgeously tailored 1890s bodice where just everything was so beautifully finished. Here we have seams where the edges are pinked and that's it. We've got some hand sewing right here. This is where the ribbon is sewn down on the outside. And again, like all of these seams, they are just pinked. We have the nice herringbone stitches of the boning, but, and some of them are missing boning. This one no longer has boning in it, but the seams themselves just pinked, not finished. And we have a center back seam and these side back seams right here. This is all just in the black cotton. And then it joins together. Okay, I literally had to put the camera down for a second while I tried to figure out a mystery and I could not solve it. So generally speaking, when you see the outside fabric on the inside of the bodice, like you do in here, that means that that is an exterior seam, a seam that goes all the way through. However, there's no seam right here on the outside. So I have no idea where this cotton is coming through from because if we look at the exact other side, this is literally flat with no seams. I, I, I'm at a loss. I have no idea. That's very weird. It's like they, they changed things in this one too, I think. Yeah. So both of these seams, this one and this one, they somehow have the blue fabric coming through to the inside, but there is no seam on the outside. I am so confused. I don't know if they put it there as a facing or some sort of reinforcing or something, but it's really weird that it's in the seam, but it's not in the exterior. I think they changed the look of the back at some point and that there might actually be three layers of fabric in these two areas right here. Because look at this, so this one is actually open. And we can see this fabric coming through. Yeah, I can feel it. There's two layers right here. And then we've got the exterior there. What the heck? So like they were making this and then they were like, wait a second, fitted backs are no longer popular. We want to have a nicely little pleated back. Oh, but we've already started to construct the bodice. Let's not undo those seams. Let's just leave them underneath. What the heck? Mind blown, you guys. That is so cool. I love when people do random things like that. It's just... It's just so interesting. And actually, the side seam where the pieces really do come together through from the outside, this one has been bound in little tape. The edges have been nicely bound, but the rest of them have just been pinked, probably because they changed their mind at the last minute and they didn't feel like redoing things or nicely binding things or whatever. That is so interesting to me. So speaking of binding, we do have a bias of the exterior right here, binding the top. It's also interestingly pieced. So we have an interesting piece right there. So that's kind of cool. And do we have any other pieces? Yes, we have the same over on this side. Actually, it's identical, uh, same direction and everything. So they've just inserted a little thing there. It might be, it's possible that when they change the back, maybe they even added a little bit of room there and so they had to add just a little piece in that is possible those are the only piece parts oh and look we've got boning sticking out so we can take a look at this boning here this looks like a brown baleen it's a lighter color than we usually see for baleen but i would say that this is still baleen and I could probably get most of this out yeah i don't want to take it all the way out because it's going to be hard to get back in but there we go, we've got a nice piece of baleen coming out there. It's in good condition too, and it's nicely rounded at the edges. Stick that back in. And again, we have a lot of boning in here. So despite this very, very tiny size, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 boning channels in this tiny, tiny little bodice. So as far as other interior details go, there is a dart underneath this bone, but I believe that is the only shaping in the bodice. Uh, no, this is also a dart, actually, this pinked one right here. It's, they're very tiny darts and or they have cut off the excess, which is possible. But yeah, we do have two darts right here in the front. And then we have a piece that is a little facing piece that's made out of the same black fabric of the interior and that is folded over stitched multiple times one to create a boning channel here and then also the edge here and that's just sewn by machine so that goes all the way up for that facing for the hooks and eyes and yep we've got the same 
Same thing over here on the other side and again with the boning right there in the center front. Looking at the inside of the sleeve, I know it is super dark in there, but it is the same cotton as the bodice. It's lined with the same cotton and you can see the seam coming through right here. So it's just treated as flat lining and actually they really nicely finished the arms eye pleasantly surprised at that that finishing so that's really cool it's done with super super narrow tape this is actually a different little black tape than the black fabric of the interior and you can again see the hand sewing lines for the ribbon going through there too likewise by the way I did briefly mention this but the top of the neckline is also bound with a very narrow tape it is also possible that this could have had a high collar too but we are coming into a little later time period so there wasn't always a high collar going on but if you've seen some of my other videos you'll know that those were often made completely separately so it's possible this also had one but I don't really think so but here's that other tape going right in there and honestly, I think that's about it for construction. Let's take a few quick measurements and wrap up this video. So it's hard to do this with one hand, but I had pulled out the waist a little bit and it looks like she's about a 24, 24 and a half inch waist. And then the bust was actually larger than I expected. I think it's about a 34 inch bust. So really quite a lot of bust to waist difference there. I went and I hooked one of the interior hooks here so that I could try to get as flat and taut of a measurement as possible. I think what makes it look so tiny is again we have a pretty short armpit to waist here which is eight and a half inches actually it's less than that it's eight and a quarter inches and the other thing that makes all of these or a lot of these bodices like this one so tiny and not fitting the dress form is that the shoulders are very very narrow on these bodices I don't really know how to take a good measurement of that but they're very narrow and they just don't fit around my dress form so all that said let's see if I can get her back on the dress form all right she is back on the dress form to help me close out this video I think that she's just really cool. I don't know. Again, I am in love with the fabric print. I also just really love the style with the collar and everything. I think it's so interesting and it gives me ideas of things that I might want to do in the future, though I do not have any plans for early 1900s coming up soon, but does get those gears turning. So hopefully you found this video interesting, helpful, useful, inspiring, any of the above. If you did like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays. This is, by the way, part of an ongoing series that I have on this channel where every month we go ahead and we look at another antique garment in my collection. So I will leave a link to that playlist up here above and also down below in the description if you haven't seen any of those other videos and you want to check out more antique bodice or antique garment construction from the 1860s through the 19 teens I have a lot of those videos on there Okay, as I was saying though, I also do post to my Instagram every day, so please go check out my Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support me and all of the work that I do on this channel and help bring additional educational content of examining videos to you, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I would also like to give a special huge thank you to all of my absolutely wonderful patrons. Seriously, you make everything possible. And in particular, I would like to thank those patrons that are at my romantic Victorian and Edwardian level tiers. And they are Angela, Sharon, Audra, Carlin, Maria, Mirage, Sarah, Tiffany, Bobby, Denise, Elizabeth E, Elizabeth W, Jean, Rhonda, and Vivian. Thank you all so, so much to all of those wonderful patrons, all of my other wonderful patrons, and all of you for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!